John Cochell from Through the Fire Training Organization at my gym in Tyler, Texas called The Metal Shop. This is part three in a three-part small series on five count sombrata and uh, hopefully you understand now why I think this is such an important drill for you to do and a concept that you should be using in all of your training modalities. Um, if you recall, if you haven't seen it, go back and check it out, but if you recall in the first video we talked about the very first training pattern and how to add variables on your side that wouldn't affect your partner's responses. In the second video we talked about adding in things that will force your opponent to shift and change their response based on your feeds. In this uh, in final part of the series we'd like to talk about how to really really up the challenge in the drill by adding different weapons categories. So first we're going to show you how to do this drill with daggers and we saw a little bit of that in the first drill, uh, the first video I'm sorry. Uh, then we're going to be able to do this uh, with empty hands and show this how this turns into gunting motions, uh, how to use your fists and this I find is a very good way to start transitioning into some of the pun and tukan work which is the Filipino boxing methodology. Then we're all going to also be doing this from a left-handed lead or an off-hand perspective. We're going to do it with a stick and a knife in the uh, stick and dagger format. We're also going to do it with double sticks and you'll be able to see how it changes very slightly but nonetheless it changes the way we have to respond to the attacks. Uh, in the weapon variable will bring out a different quality in your movement, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for those subtle variations that will change and improve your movement quality. And then finally what we're going to do is we're going to start putting together some asymmetrical combinations of those aforementioned categories. So instead of being knife against a knife, it might be knife against a stick. It might be empty hands against a knife. It might be double stick against a stick and a knife, etc. And again, we want to do this because it forces you to really, really analyze the range and your motion around the weapon that is attacking you and how you are defending against it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to begin doing different weapons categories. So we started out in the first video with a base pattern. We started out in the second video showing you some things that can cause a little stress, a little more dynamic flow. Now what I want to do is just look at different weapons categories and then we'll finish out this video demonstrating some asymmetrical weapons categories. So what exactly does it look like and how does it make you train differently when we're not using the same weapons loadout. So we're just going to flow through a few different examples here. Not going to do a lot of instruction. Just look at it, glean what you can out of it. Notice the subtle changes in the body mechanics. The techniques maybe will change just slightly because we have to adapt it to make sense with the weapon category. So we're gonna start out with double stick, five count sombrata on the right hand side. Notice there's still a checking hand that must happen. Even though I'm here, Lee still has to check my hand as he comes through and he starts to feed me. I stop and a check, or I can do the other way. When I throw this in here, he has to check the hand. He feeds, it's a high shield, there's still a check. There's still a check, there's still a check. Still a check, still a check. The check is always in place, okay? And again, that check, it comes in the form of a destruction. Okay, now we're gonna do it with a stick and a knife. Now the knife becomes our checking hand. Yep, switch your hands over. There you go. Come towards me. There you go. Now we'll do it just with a blade. Again, 
Watch how everything must tighten up now that we have a shorter and smaller weapon. I don't need a lot of space because I don't need to generate power. The sharpness of the blade gives me all the power that I need, so this becomes very compact. Okay, now we'll do the exact same thing with our empty hands. This becomes a practice in using the knuckles to guntang or to mouse the nerve centers in the arms. The other thing that we can do to make this a little more easy on each other's arms is just open the hands and pat. And so you'll see sometimes we'll actually use knuckles, sometimes we'll open it up and pat. But the emphasis would be on destruction. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to start interspersing asymmetrical weapons categories. Again, I don't want you to think in terms of is this combat effective, I want you to think in terms of how is it changing the body mechanics that we must use in order to pull this off. Okay, so I'm going to begin with a, a single knife and Lee is going to begin with a stick. Okay, now Lee's going to drop his stick and he's going to go against my knife. Now watch how he must change his body mechanics. arguably not the best way to fight against a knife. But again, it's to train to feel the difference in how the body must function, okay? Now we'll go single stick against double, double stick. Okay, so we feed. and so on and so forth. The only thing that will limit your training here is your imagination. One thing we didn't get involved with here, and I'd like you to consider, is a Dos Mano style weapon. So a baseball bat, a heavy crowbar, something that you have to use two hands on to control. This also can be done and will change how you begin to move your body, okay? The other kind of weapon category you could use is a staff or a long weapon. We're not going to get into that in today's conversation, but I want you to look at it, play with it, make it make sense to you. Okay, be, be okay with experimentation as long as, as it makes sense to you. It can't be nonsense in your own mind, otherwise there's not a point to do it. So as you can see, by adding in those variables in weapons and how you do the drill really changes it and it can really become a very challenging drill to use. Uh, and again, in, in videos in the future, we'll be showing you different ways of using the Sombrata modality or the Sombrata training methodology to train different types of arts outside of the Filipino arts. How to do it on the ground, how to do it in a stand-up, in a locking format, or in a boxing format. And you'll find that this becomes a very, very useful training method for you. Uh, play with the different weapons categories, but the one thing I would caution you, or the one thing I would challenge you to do, is make sure that your responses are correct. You'll be able to tell if you're trying to do a drop stick deflection with a blade that's only two inches long, obviously that's not going to work. And you can look at it and very quickly understand, hmm, that doesn't work. Uh, if it doesn't work and it doesn't make sense, question it. 
I'm not saying that you should question your instructor. I'm not saying that you should question me or other people. I'm saying that you should have a mind that thinks through what you're doing. Um, yeah, you should question people, not in a, not in a way that's ac accusing them, but just trying to get a better understanding for yourself about why you're doing what you're doing. You shouldn't do things just out of rote memorization. You shouldn't do things just to mimic somebody. You should always do things that are intentional to help you grow in your process.